Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Dave Meltzer joining us. Newest edition of The Observer, front page of WrestlingObserver.com. You can head up there as a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com. You can read The New Observer. You can read about 2,000 back issues of The Observer in the archives, dating back to 1992. You can listen to every single one of our podcasts, dating back to 2005. 13,000 shows. That's a lot of shows. And the new Observer, Dave, is headlined by more on this Vince McMahon story. And uh, I had a question unrelated to the issue. There's a new article about uh, this in Variety today, correct? Yes, I read the article, yeah. Why in the world is every article dropping on a Friday? It's like the worst day to gain any traction. Um, I don't really have a good answer for that other than... um... Uh, you know, in the in the mainstream media, they actually Friday is actually considered a good day to drop an article. Mm. So, so that's why. But uh, there really wasn't the Variety article really didn't have much in it. You know, I mean, as far as it's an article in a major you know media publication, so the fact that it's there was a uh, you know was was interesting because it gives the story legs. But there wasn't like any what I would call new information broken in the article either. Dave. Um... A lot of people have been surprised, including the journal authors themselves, that there has not been a little bit more groundswell after that second article. A lot of people are taking the silence from other media sources as they may not care about it. But sometimes sources like to work things out for themselves and Variety obviously reporting on it. They didn't do any really new reporting, but has there been anyone... To your knowledge, that is working on a story that you could say maybe has contacted you, or do you have any idea if there's any feelers out there from anybody else that's looking into this from any level, whether it be a business point of view or a personal McMahon point of view or anything like that? The only stuff I have done is a couple of radio shows, uh, you know, stemming from the second article, and um, I did an, you know, an interview with Bloomberg. But I mean, as far as uh, no, not really. And you know, you, you would think I would be one of the key people you would go to. Um, so I would. So the, basically, the answer is no. Hmm. So uh, as noted, the first story got a lot of attention. Vince came out, acted like a weirdo on TV. Second story came out, lost a lot less traction. No Vince McMahon on television. And now, no, 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 no ratings. The first one had a. It led to a big ratings boost for Raw and SmackDown that week. The second one led to nothing. I mean, I mean, I don't think that it hurt the ratings, but it certainly, you know, the numbers for both Raw and SmackDown were down. Although Raw was going to be down no matter what because it was coming off of, uh, you know, well, actually Raw was up. I take that back because it's July Fourth, but it was down from usual. So what? What do you? I mean, we've talked about this. You asked me on Sunday, like, what do you make of this? And I said, well, I'll, I'll see what happens this week. And uh, literally nothing happened this week. So now I'm starting to feel more and more that there probably is nothing coming of this. But I guess we do have to wait oh, no, no, the no, investigation no, 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 no. is, I mean, is I mean, no, I, There may be nothing coming of this. Well, I mean, the reporters from the Wall Street Journal said they're still going to be working on stuff. But, but, I mean, as far as something actually coming from this, nothing is going to come of this unless something, somebody, you know, really damaging comes forward or the investigation comes in and the investigation reveals something that, uh, you know, he won't be able to survive. But the investigation will come in at some point. And at that point, uh, you know, whatever it reveals is going to be the end of the story. And either probably what will end up is he'll either be back as CEO or he'll be out. I don't think there's going to be a middle ground. We got uh, the G1 starting tonight, I believe, actually. Um, oh, middle of the night tonight. Middle yeah. of the night tonight. And uh, I guess... You know, you you. This is not your favorite G one in terms of of the lineup and the way that it's structured, with everyone only having six oh, no, matches it, instead of nine. Yeah, it's it's a it's much um, it's a much weaker tournament than uh, you know than the, than any of the last ten years probably, as far as um, you know less. Uh, Less, less what I would call on paper super matches because there's, you know, they're spread up into four blocks. So, and every block has a couple of weak links in it. So, I think that the match quality is going to be way down. Um, as far as excitement level, I guess we'll see, wh- you know, how people are into four blocks instead of two. I mean, that's that's, uh, you know, a, uh, you know, uncharted water, so to speak. 
New so, psychology for Jado, too, because you can't have that situation here where somebody goes on a losing streak or a winning streak early because you only have those six block matches. So right. it's going to really change up how he does everything. Right, because we've, we've had those years where a guy will lose like two matches right away or sometimes even three matches right away and then do the big comeback at the end. Or you'll have the guy start out with six big wins in a row. And then, you know, doesn't win the block because they start losing at the end. And you really only have probably one match giveaway to do this. So, like, say, like, Jay White, let's say he loses, if he loses his first match, um, but you want him to come back to win, and I'm just throwing out a name, uh, he pretty much has to win. I mean, I don't, I don't think you can, uh, with six matches, I think that maybe you'll have a block where four and two, if it's with, with the right four and two can win. But, uh, boy, you, you know, I mean, literally, you know, if you, you, you two losses is the most you can have, and that's it. Now, oftentimes, not always, if it is your first ever G one, you do a lot of losing. But uh, 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 often, yes, yes. Filthy Tom is the uh, he was the open weight champion for over a year. They pushed him super strong on uh, New Japan Strong, and uh, a lot of people have been looking at his block. And you know, some people have said, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he lost every match, but beat Okada. But then, of course, I don't know about that one. Yeah, you'd you'd be setting up a title match with a guy who actually lost every other match in the block. So I don't see that happening. No, but no, uh, no how, they're not going to not going to give a title match to a guy who goes one in five in G one. Yes, how how do you think that uh, that he will do for his his first time? Oh, man. You know, it's hard to say. I think he's just going to be. I don't think. You know, okay, I'm going to go two or three wins would be my prediction. Okay. Now, also, we got uh, SummerSlam coming up as well. We're about uh, a couple weeks away, in fact. They have uh, passed 30,000, but uh, well below what they did last year. Yes. Uh, but still, they are at 30,000, which is pretty good for SummerSlam. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts, and what is what kind of, uh, like, what's your feeling as to how this show is going to do? Because Money in the Bank apparently uh, did, there was more interest than at least I figured there would be. Um... Yeah, I mean, I get, I guess, uh, I, I actually should look that up actually today as far as like the interest level of everything. But um, SummerSlam, I mean, the interest level will be high because of the name SummerSlam and because of the idea, whether this ends up being true or not, that this is the finale, finale of Reigns and Lesnar, who are the two biggest stars of the current era. Um, you know that. So, so in a, in a sense, this blow off should be huge. I don't think it's going to be as 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 huge as. It would have been in another era by any means, but I do think it's for this era. I think it's going to be fairly big. Um, the thing that's interesting is, I think the late August is better than late July for a date, but I guess we'll see. I just just that my feeling is because I know that like with TV and everything, people start getting like back to the norm by the end of the summer. But July thirtieth, you're in the middle of the summer, so that's a low. You know, that's when people are watching the least. Well, I, I kind of also feel that uh, I like August better. I think that m the middle of August would be good. I think if you get to late August, I think a lot of people, if they have kids, or they're doing that one last big summer trip before the kids go back to school. So I don't think like the last week of August would necessarily be the, the best time to do it. I think mid-August would be all right. But uh, the thing with the the, the rains, they're, 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 all, they're, all, they're also head-to-head -head with UFC, which is not... Um, I mean, it's not a kiss of death because they're not on pay-per-view, but if they were still doing a pay-per-view model, going head-to-head -head with UFC would be absolutely stupid. I also think in terms of, of interest in the main event, I mean, I know they're billing it as a blow-off and everything like that, but I think if you did a poll, I don't think you'd find one person who would say, I believe these two men will never wrestle again on a on a big show. Yeah, I, I can't I, 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 unless I, some something tragic occurred. Like they're obviously going to have another match. Well, I mean, like look at WWE and stipulations. I mean, the rule is is that you don't take it seriously because it, because they don't take it seriously. You know, another thing that you talk about in uh, many of the observer issues actually is a lot of people when they see these numbers, whether it be Raw, Dynamite, Rampage, a lot of talk about man, you know, pro wrestling. These numbers used to be so big, and now what's happening? It's a different world. It is. And uh, how, like, you know, how it's are like, it's all like, of the shows doing in terms of the cable charts? Well. Because um, really, it's doing well. Every uh, NXT is, is usually between uh, 9 and 22 in its time slot. Um, 
uh, Rampage is, is sometimes one, often two or three. Well, the worst, I think, has been about five. Uh, Dynamite is usually one or two. Raw will be number one. It won't be number one this week because of Home Run Derby, but Raw will be number one all through the summer until football season starts, and then it will probably be number two all through football season. So, yeah, I mean, it's um, wrestling's doing really, really well on cable. Um, when you look at those lower numbers compared to 10 years ago or 20 years ago, it's it's everything is like that. So it's not really, you know, when people do that thing, it's very disingenuous. People watch in different ways. I mean, the things that you should look at is... You know, like, uh, you know, how many people are going to the matches? That's a really good barometer to tell you how much interest there is. And with WWE, it's low end of usual. And with AEW, for a secondary promotion, it's kind of phenomenal, even though uh, WWE's ahead of AEW. You know, so it's like wrestling's doing fine, and there's indies all over the place. I mean, the number the number of shows on any given Friday or Saturday is ridiculously high. Um I mean, there's certainly people with agendas that want to prove somehow that, like, by TV ratings that wrestling's dead. But if you use that, baseball's dead, and it's not dead. Basketball's dead, and it's not dead. You know what I mean? Every, every, every genre is dead based on the way people will say wrestling is dead. All right. Well, all we these actually, things are alive. Yep, we have to head out. I want to thank you so much for doing the show today. Back in a moment with more, everybody. Observer Live. This is how the show begins, really. Oscar does a back kick. Camera cut. She does a back fist. Camera cut. She starts to run. Camera cut. She gets a hip attack. Camera cut. She drops to her knees. Camera cut. She throws a kick. Camera cut. She stands up and screams. Camera cut to people brawling on the floor. I was furious. Do you understand? I wanted to shut the show off and not watch anymore. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.